Welcome to our five on five. Pleased to be joined today by South Medford graduate and Grand Slam tennis champion Jonathan Stark. How good to see you, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks good for to see you. Thanks for being here. So yeah. gotta gotta rattle off a little bit of your bio here. 19 men's doubles titles at the highest level, including the French Open and the mixed doubles title at Wimbledon with Martina Navratilova. People yep. people may have heard of her. Sure. So uh, incredible career. Congratulations. Thank you. What have you been up to lately? So I'm running a. Uh, I call it an academy, but it's a it's a program. It's called Oregon Elite Tennis. It's up in Portland, Oregon, and I work with um, everywhere between high high pretty high level kids that are trying to play college tennis, and then all the way down to to kids just starting. And I've really found out I kind of enjoy both aspects of coaching coaching that level those levels of tennis. Yeah, and you mm -hmm. and you've spent most of most of your career post post tennis or post -pro professional career coaching yeah. Yeah. In, in some mm -hmm. forms. What is it like teaching youngsters? After I mean all that high level experience. Yeah, it's really it's really um, it's interesting. I, I, I really enjoy it. I, I really have found a love for the game of tennis as you kind of uh, move on, and I really appreciate the game a little bit more now. And so uh, I really enjoy teaching kids the game, uh, not only technique, but just kind of what the game can um, can teach you. Just like any sport, any of us that played uh, uh, sports, and especially at a high level, you learn that dealing with adversity and um, things don't always go right. So I really like helping the kids kind of dealing with some of those emotions they might get on the tennis court, and um, um, especially at the higher levels. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so how do you think uh, growing up in a relatively smaller town like Medford, mm -hmm. uh, how do you think that helped you grow into where you did professional? Uh, I think it was a, a huge, a huge help, especially younger. Um, you get so much support from the community. Um, things are a little easier in a small town. I can remember my Good buddy Will Forsyth and I, who played tennis every day together, would ride our bikes up to the club and play tennis, or we'd we would play in our backyards and so forth. So um, the support that you receive from a small town like Medford and and um, um, just the uh, the overall uh, praise and attention and, and positive reinforcement you get, I think, is is so good and and it gives gives a kid. And I can remember getting a lot of confidence from that. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, and and you have three kids. Uh, yeah. You know. Pretty much all teenagers, almost. Yeah. So, what kind of coach are you to your own kids? It's hard, you know, and especially in my situation, I really tried to lean them away from tennis. Okay. But it was such a big part of my, you know, I coached, I worked yeah. up in Seattle. Your entire and life. Yeah, and yeah. tennis was just such a big part of our lives. So, all three of my kids play tennis. My my oldest son Charlie is actually playing college tennis right now, and hmm. so he chose to go that path. And and. Um, my, my younger son plays a lot of lacrosse, which is great, so it's something totally different mm -hmm. that I know nothing about, and yeah. my daughter's into everything, but um, um, it's hard. It's, it's hard because you, you try to find that balance of like, okay, guys, you got to get out and practice. You got to get out and play. Yeah. Same thing probably, probably my parents dealt with, you know, like, okay, what do you, you know, you can't just sit around watching TV all day or doing this, so you sure. got to get out and, and do stuff and, and, and practice and work, and so it's, it's finding that balance um, of not pushing them too hard, and, and sometimes I'm sure I did, and, and, yeah. um, and, um, but I really tried to take a back seat on that, and, and if they could find a coach that they had, I really let the coach do that, because I think that's more the coach's role than the parent's role, personally. That, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. and you don't want to pressure your kids. Yeah. They are kids, after all, let them be kids. Exactly. Interesting. Okay, exactly. we're going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, much more in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, here with South Medford grad and Grand Slam tennis champion Jonathan Stark. Uh, sports specialization, it certainly uh, seems to be a more prominent thing now than maybe when you were growing up in high school. Is, is it a good thing, and, and what age is the right age for that? Yeah, I did. when I was uh, preparing for my speech last night uh, at the uh, Southern sports Oregon Commission. Sports Commission yeah, thing, yeah. I did a little research on this. And, and um, you know, I think the biggest problem is sports spe specialization is occurring way too early. You know, parents think or kids think, like, if I'm not you know, committing to one sport at seven, eight, nine, ten years old, then I have no chance of playing college sports mm. or maybe professional sports. And I think that's the biggest mistake. Uh, um, I think by the time you're 13, 14 or so, I think that's the time where you kind of maybe narrow it down to a sport or two or something that maybe if they fit together well would be the time, in my, in my opinion. But I think it's a real, you know, tragedy is kind of a harsh word, but, but it's mm -hmm. sad when you see um, you know, kids that are just putting all their marbles in one basket. And, and I think it also, uh, you, you find out in, in, in some of the research you read, it, it, 
you become a better athlete playing playing multiple sports and you're working different things and everything. Mm -hmm. So I groups. honestly think, you know, I was lucky enough to be able to play basketball growing up here in Medford. And I think playing basketball made me a better tennis player, the footwork and the explosiveness and so forth. So I, I, I think they definitely can go hand in hand. Interesting. Yeah, because you played basketball mm -hmm. your, your senior year of high yeah. school, even though people at the national yeah. tennis level were telling you not to. Yeah, I actually yeah. didn't play my junior year because I was kind of listening and, oh, okay. and doing that. And so I played every year. Uh, except my junior year of high school, and I and, and I missed it tremendously. I I, mm -hmm. I really was uh, just just uh, you know with tennis that winter period where you play basketball is kind of a nice break anyway. So yeah. so I missed that break. I missed the camaraderie with my teammates and the just uh, I mentioned last night like running out on the basketball court. You you miss that intensity and that 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 um, experience. So mm -hmm. senior year I played and um, yeah against some 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 people's uh, wishes, but um, I loved it. Uh, I, I want to ask you about the Know Your Role campaign. Mm -hmm. I know you're familiar with this. You know, we're proud to partner with the Southern mm -hmm. Oregon Sports Commission on this. Uh, you know, it's, it's that uh, overbearing parent, if you yeah. will, that's uh, badgering uh, mm -hmm. the, the referee, the coach. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's really hurting kids' involvement in sports. Right. Is that worse now than, than when you think you were growing up? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it is worse. You know, I can remember um, especially tennis being an individual sport, seeing yeah. parents that are super involved and get way too involved in sports. Um, maybe because sports is becoming a, a bigger bigger business and a bigger thing. That, that Maybe it's a little worse now. But, um, you know, I, I think anyone's involved in, in athletics has seen the overbearing parent, and whether it be pressure on their kids or yelling at a ref, or getting mad at a coach because of playing time. And, um, you know, I think that this initiative that the Sports Commission is doing is, is fantastic because all it's doing is hurting the kids and, mm -hmm. and it makes them, you know, not enjoy the game they're playing. And, and it, you know, it is about the kids. Yeah, and as, <laughs> as a parent who, yeah. who's trying not to overcoach, mm -hmm. you know, as you, as you referenced, yeah. your kids have their own coaches. Yeah. What advice do you have for, for holding back? Yeah. Has that been difficult? Really hard, really yeah. hard, and and uh, especially you know with my son that my son Charlie that is playing tennis, it's hard yeah. because it's it's towing that line of like I have all the experience, this this experience that I feel like I can help him, but then you know he doesn't want to hear from me. He wants to he wants me to be dad. So yeah. so I I would my, I guess my advice would be back off as much as possible and let the as I said earlier let the coaches handle that mm -hmm. stuff and, and and just try to be their parent. Well, it's great to have you here. Thanks yeah. for making time. I know Thanks, you're not in town long. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I appreciate being here. Thanks. My pleasure. Stay yeah. with us. We'll be right back.